Namaste and welcome to Daily News Simplify, the what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today we would be analyzing the Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper of 20th February 2018. Now let us begin. Now from page 1, the first news we would be analyzing is about the recent visit of the Canadian Prime Minister. Now the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is visiting India from 17th to 24th Feb, and therefore this visit is an ongoing visit. Now the second reason as to why is it in the news is that there have been reports that the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has been snubbed by the Indian government, meaning that his visit has been ignored or played down by the Indian government. Now it has been ignored by considering the low key welcome that he has received in India. Now let us understand why. Now the reasons given as to why the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has been snubbed on his recent visit to India. The reason is that the supporters of the Khalistani movement form an electoral demographic or what is popularly referred to as a vote bank for the party of Justin Trudeau. Now you have to understand that according to the 2015 data by the former Ministry of Overseas Affairs there were around 86 lakh persons of Indian origin in Canada or which was about 3% of the Canadian population. Now out of this around 47 lakh or 1.5% of the Canadian population is formed by the Sikh community and the supporters of the Khalistani movement form a minuscule or a very small number within this 1.5%. So although they might form a vote bank but it would not be of considerable difference as compared to the total population of persons of Indian origin in Canada or of Canada's total electoral population in general. Now various people of Justin Trudeau's political party and government have been sympathetic towards the Khalistani supporters now there are various examples to support this now Justin Trudeau himself attended a Khalsa Day parade that was organized by such Khalistani supporters and moreover the assembly of ontario passed a resolution accusing india of genocide in the 1984 anti sikh riots now apart from this there have been other various examples and because of which india has on official and on non official levels complained about this to the canadian government but the current canadian government of justin trudeau has ignored india's sensitivity and is also seen as being soft on militant khalistani supporters and it is because of this ignorance of the canadian government towards india's objection with regards to the khalistani movement and its supporters which is seen as being the main cause of the recent visit of prime minister justin trudeau being snubbed by the indian government now as you know that the visit is an ongoing visit and therefore there is an expectation that justin trudeau might distance himself from the khalistani elements and should embrace internationalism and not let the vote bank politics of canada affect india canada bilateral relations now this is also one of the conclusion that you would find in an editorial in the indian express newspaper now since the visit is in transition till the 24th of february let us wait and see on how it moves forward now with this we move on to our next article now we have taken this news from the editorial page on page 8 now the reason why is it in the news is that the president of iran hasan rouhani visited india from 15 to 17 february and during this visit nine agreements were signed between india and iran now the important agreements signed within this visit was that india and iran have signed a double tax avoidance agreement now a double tax avoidance agreement has the main objective to avoid or eliminate double taxation now by double taxation it means that an income is taxed twice but for the same income now this happens wherein the taxpayer resides in one country such as in india but earns his income from an another country such as from iran but his income is taxed twice in both india and in iran and to avoid this india and iran have signed a double tax avoidance agreement now another important aspect from this visit was about investment in rupees so india has announced that india would allow indian investment in iran can be done in rupees now this provision has only been extended to bhutan and nepal and iran becomes the third country where it is now possible now this has been done because indian banks have money which are supposed to be given as payments for imports from iran but it has been blocked because international banks have refused to facilitate trade with iran due to fear of us sanctions 
Now through this provision, it allows payments that India has to make to Iran, such as for oil, to be routed back to Iran through investment in rupees. Now another aspect of this visit is that Iran has again reiterated its support for India's permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. And finally, one of the more important agreements that has been signed is with regard to the Chabahar port, where an announcement has been made that an Indian company would operate the Chabahar Shahid Pasti port. Now hopefully you have understood the overview given in this article with regards to the visit of Iranian president to India. You have understood the three main features that have been brought out from this visit with regards to the double tax avoidance agreement that has been signed between India and Iran, allowing investment in rupees in Iran, and further the announcement of an Indian company which is going to operate the Chabahar port, or specifically the Chabahar Shahid Basti port. Now this visit would be covered in the upcoming March edition of the Focus magazine. And what is required to further understand from this article is about the Chabahar port. Now the Chabar port has been covered in the December edition of the Focus magazine and questions have previously been asked in your UPSC prelims examination with regards to the Chabar port. Now let us understand this further. Now I had made this for the December edition of the Focus magazine. Now the first important thing to know about the Chabar port is its geographical location. Now if you see in this image, Chabar port is located in the Gulf of Oman and lies east of the Strait of Hormuz. Now the Chabar port serves Iran's only major oceanic port because it is the only port of Iran that has direct access to the Indian Ocean while the other major ports of Iran lie west of Strait of Hormuz. Now the Chabahar port connects with Afghanistan at the Zaranj Dalram Highway and this Zaranj Dalram Highway is also been built and financed by India and it is important because it links the Chabahar port with what is called the Garland Road or the Ring Road of Afghanistan which connects its major cities from Herat, Dalram, Kandahar, Kabul and Mazar-e-Sharif. Moreover, Chabahar port is the nearest Iranian port to India and is roughly around 1000 kilometers from the Indian port of Kandla in the state of Gujarat or roughly about 1600 kilometers from the port of Mumbai. Now the main importance of the Chabahar port for India is that this port serves the nearest port entry for India into Central Asia, especially Afghanistan after the Pakistani ports. So if you look at this map, after Pakistan, Chabahar port is the nearest port to India which allows its access to Afghanistan. And that is why it was also recently in the news that India supplied around 1 million tons of wheat to Afghanistan through the first shipment from the Chabahar port since it allows India to bypass Pakistan. Now a question was asked in your UPSC 2017 prelims examination which had asked what is the importance of developing Chabahar port by India? Now moving further, now India and Iran agreed to develop the Chabahar port under the new Delhi declaration in 2003, wherein India developed the Shahid Basti port of Chabahar. Now after this declaration was signed, there was a stagnation period from 2003 till to 2015 because of the international sanctions that had been imposed by the permanent 5 plus 1 countries on Iran with regards to its nuclear program they were delaying the development of the Chabahar port. And within that period, India developed the Dalram Saranj Highway, which was supposed to connect the Chabahar port to the Garland Road of Afghanistan. Now, Chabahar port is also an important aspect of the International North-South Transport Corridor as it intends to connect India to Central Asia and Northern Europe. And similarly, it is also an important aspect of India's Connect Central Asia policy wherein the Chabahar port through the International North-South Transport Corridor is supposed to connect India to the countries of Central Asia. Now in 2015, the permanent 5 plus 1 countries and Iran signed the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, thereby several sanctions on Iran were lifted and subsequently a trilateral agreement was signed between India, Iran and Afghanistan with regard to a transport corridor which was centred upon the port of Chabahar. And in 2017, the first shipment was made from India to Afghanistan through the Chabahar port. Now hopefully, after understanding the geographical location of Chabahar port, you've also gotten a brief overview of the timeline with regards to the Chabahar port. Now this focus article further contains the impact of the Chabahar port on bilateral relations between India and Afghanistan, India and Iran, and Afghanistan and Pakistan, and moreover, it gives a comparative study between the Gwadar port of Pakistan and the Chabahar port of Iran. And you can refer to the December edition of the Focus magazine to further understand about the Chabahar port.
Now with this, we move on to our next article. Now we have taken the lead editorial from page 8. Now this editorial gives a perspective from Nepal on the current relations between India and the new government that has been formed in Nepal. Now the main argument of this editorial is that India should have a hands-off approach, meaning it should not intervene in Nepal politics to ensure mutually beneficial relations. Apart from this, this editorial has made certain statements such as that the key reason for political instability in Nepal has been of India's continuous intervention. Moreover, the article makes an argument with regards to China-Nepal relations that India should leave Nepal and other countries to develop relations with China and such growing ties such as in the form of China-Nepal railways would be beneficial to Indian markets. Now if you remember yesterday's video with regard to the lead editorial by M.K. Narayanan, the causes of concern listed with regards to India-Nepal relations has been of growing ties of the new government of Nepal with China. And according to this article, India should let Nepal develop relations with China in the hope that it would benefit Indian markets. Now apart from this, what this article further highlights is of the internal politics that exist in Nepal. So considering the crux and the focus of this article, it would not be relevant to analyze this article from a UPSC perspective. And therefore, we move on. Now we have taken this article from the editorial page on page 9. Now the focus of this article is about a pilot project of the Niti Ayo on the direct benefit transfer for fertilizer subsidies. Now let us understand on how this pilot project of Niti Ayo works. Now each time a farmer purchases fertilizer from a dealer, the farmer presses his or her thumb on a point of sale device you might have seen at your local merchant which you use to pay through your debit or your credit card. Now considering this as a representational image, this pilot project also uses a similar device based upon fingerprint analysis. Now after the farmer has pressed his thumb on this device, an authentication receipt comes out which gives the detail of the purchase and the subsidy that is to be paid by the government to the manufacturer. Now hopefully up till here you have understood on how the pilot project of the Niti Ayo with regards to fertilizer subsidies works. You understand that when a farmer buys a fertilizer from a merchant, a point of sale device is used to authenticate the purchase and the subsidy that is to be paid by the government to the manufacturer. Now let us understand the advantages of this pilot project. Now the first advantage is that it restricts diversion. Wherein, when dealers used to initially get fertilizers which had already been subsidized, they would divert it for a higher margin. The second advantage of this project is that it prevents leakages. Wherein, with the use of the point of sale device, the sale of fertilizer is authenticated in terms of its purchase receipt and in terms of the subsidy to be paid to the manufacturer and thereby preventing leakages. And the final advantage of this project is that it brings greater transparency and accountability. Wherein, now the farmer, through the purchase receipt, understands on how much the fertilizer actually costs and is therefore not overcharged. And secondly, it brings accountability at the trader level. Now the challenge is ahead with this scheme. Now the first challenge with regards to this pilot project is the problem of internet connectivity. Where in many rural areas, connectivity to implement the POS machine is not available or of poor quality. The second challenge with regards to this project is to provide proper infrastructure wherein desktops, laptops, smartphones, etc. has to be provided and implemented for proper direct benefit transfer for fertilizer subsidies. Now the challenge that this program has faced is of stakeholders, wherein many earlier dealers have been reluctant to shift to this system because their margins have decreased in the sense their earlier tactics of diversion and leakage is not working. Now it is considered that within this year, direct benefit transfer in fertilizers is going to expand towards the whole country. And to accomplish this, the Niti Ayo has created a DBT cell in the Department of Fertilizers under the Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizer. And similarly, Niti Ayo has also set up a project monitoring unit to ensure proper and time-bound implementation of this project. Now hopefully up till here, you have understood the advantages of this pilot project and the forthcoming challenges with regard to this direct benefit transfer on fertilizer subsidies. You also further understand that the Niti Ayo has formed a DBT cell under the Department of Fertilizers and moreover has formed a project monitoring unit to overlook this project. Now let us understand as to where this is placed in your UPSC syllabus. Direct benefit transfer and fertilizer subsidy would form a part of your GS Paper 3 under the Economic Development section and more specifically 
issues related to direct and indirect farm subsidies. And now we move on to our next article. Now we have taken this article from page 2. Now let us first understand as to why is it in the news. Now NJT or the National Green Tribunal has asked for a compliance report on the number of steps taken by the central government and the government of Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. And this compliance report is to be based on what steps they have taken to clean River Ganga in the stretch between Gomuk and the city of Unnao. Now with regards to this, the NJT has directed the National Mission for Clean Ganga and the Uttar Pradesh Jal Nigam to submit a report on the number of drains joining River Ganga from Kanpur to the UP border. Now hopefully up till here you have understood as to why is it in the news that the NJT has asked for a compliance report from the central government and the government of Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand on the steps taken to clean River Ganga from Gaumuk to the city of Unnao. Now in an earlier judgment, the National Green Tribunal had passed an order for the rejuvenation of the River Ganga. Now the first point given by the NJT was that an area of 100 meters from the edge of the river from Haridwar to Unnao was declared as a known development zone, meaning that no construction is allowed, including construction of commercial or residential building. The second point given by the NGT is that it prohibited disposal of municipal solid waste, e-waste or biomedical waste on the floodplains, river or the tributaries of Ganga. The third point that was formed was it banned mechanical mining. The fourth point given by the NGT was that it directed the state governments to demarcate floodplains and by demarcation it means to form proper boundaries. Now the fifth and the last point given by the NGT was to form a list of permissible and non-permissible activities which should be allowed near the river. Now hopefully up till here you have understood the earlier order given by the National Green Tribunal for the rejuvenation of River Ganga. Now a question was asked in your UPSC mains examination which was asked in the 2013 mains examination wherein the question had asked that taking River Ganga as an example discuss the strategies which may be adopted for river water pollution control and management. So with the explanation given in this section you would be able to give an answer with regards to the role of NGT in the water pollution control and management of the River Ganga. Now with this we come to an end in the analysis of today's paper. Now we move on to the question for today.